Welcome to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. The first story is called, We'll leave for lunch. Many years ago, I worked at a dot-com startup. They are no longer around. I worked on the engineering side. Years in, the company was growing and we had lots of new people working there. Several of us would stay at our desk during lunch and play multiplayer games on the network. IT didn't mind. It was a nice way to blow off rock stress. Our customer support reps would often come up to ask us questions on how to handle our customer issue. And we would always jump out of the game to help them, despite being on our lunch break. We also made sure to keep our lunch gaming to exactly our lunch time. No overage. Some employee complained to our boss about us playing games during work time. Our boss talked to us and told us we had to stop. We explained that it was only during lunch, we had IT's approval and we would stop playing anytime someone needed something, despite working during our break. He never had our bags and refused to talk to the complainer. Ok, fine, we'll quit playing during lunch. From then on, engineering always took their lunch offside. Customer support began bringing up issues that they couldn't get anyone and that they had to make customers wait and call them back, extending customer support resolution times. They stayed leaving for lunch well after I left. The next story is called, they thought they had power. This happened back in the late 1990s. I had worked for the government in the lowest paid position for 5 years. Due to the high unemployment and fluctuation of workloads, I would be temporarily promoted to 3 or even 4 positions above my base position for between 3 to 8 months at a time. I was very lucky, because when the layoffs came every year, I was always the cut off and managed to stay employed without a break in service during this time. I am bilingual and so every person I interacted with would be spoken to in the language they started talking to me in. There were two ladies in our HR who had an argument over which was my mother tongue. They called me into HR and asked me if I was French or English. I told them it didn't matter, I was completely bilingual. They insisted that I choose one based on my early schooling, which was done in English. I was then sent on language testing for French, which I passed to their satisfaction. Suddenly I had a slightly bigger paycheck than I had anticipated and was told that I was eligible for the bilingual bonus as I worked on files and dealt with people in both languages. During my entire tenure I worked in both English and French. The perk amounted to about $32 every two weeks, so not really a huge bonus, but enough to get an extra case of beer. Fast forward 6 years. I was transferred to a much larger office in lieu of being laid off, but at my base salary. My immediate supervisor was one level higher than I was, but she was drunk with her perceived power. I met her on my first day and it was quite bizarre. She stomped into our work area, there were 3 others plus me, hopped on our table and stood there yelling at the top of her voice, get over here, come on, hurry up. When the four of us were in front of her looking up, she began wagging her finger at each of us in turn, like we were naughty kids at a daycare. She started yelling that there were forms that needed to be completed and sent to certain places and that we had to do it properly or there would be hell to pay etc. and so on. When she stopped yelling to breathe, I calmly put my hand up and asked her, are these new procedures or are you angry that they haven't been done properly? Remember, this was my first day and I had never even met her. I was not going to be chastised for something that I wasn't even there for. She glared at me infuriated that I would ask a question in one of her meetings and she began to berate me. I tuned her out and sat down, waiting for the meeting to be over. I knew this was a bad job situation, so I kept my mouth shut and took notes. About 6 weeks into the childishly stupid situation I received my paycheck and I was short almost $100. I looked it over very carefully. I discovered that not only was I not being paid my bilingual bonus, but that they were clawing back the bilingual bonus I had received the two paychecks before. I approached my supervisor to ask why this had happened. She said, little people like you at your level don't qualify for a bilingual bonus, so tough. Now get back to work or I will write you up. I made an appointment to speak with her supervisor, who was two levels above her. He said, I don't have time for these petty arguments, what the heck are you complaining about? You get free parking. Yes, he swore first. I shouted at him, rather rudely. What the frick does free parking have to do with this? I don't own a freaking car. I was furious. Not only because I had been denied my bilingual bonus, but that they did not consider me to be worth speaking with. 
the attitude made it quite clear that they believed that they were the top dogs in the hierarchy and I was less than a peon. I walked into my boss's office first thing the next morning and I do absolutely no work until she arrives. She tells me to get to work. I told her that I needed to know which language I was supposed to work in. She says it doesn't matter, I can work in both. I insist on seeing and writing my language of work. It takes her 20 minutes to find the right paper work. Finally, she steps her finger down on a piece of paper and goes, There, you are in an English only position, now get out of here and work. I calmly walk back to my workstation and I work all day long. But when I see a form I am supposed to stamp and file in French, I simply place it in a growing pile on my desk. I work 9.5 hours a day so that I could leave early on Thursdays and have Fridays off. At the end of my day, I clean and lock up my work area and head into her office with a pile of papers that was just under a meter in height. I drop my load on her desk and some of it falls over onto her rug. She is angry. What the heck is this? I smiled as I calmly said, it's all your French crap and I turned and left for the day. The entire office could hear her cursing at me and screaming for me to get back there and clean it up. I laughed quietly to myself as I stood there waiting for my bus, planning and enjoying my long weekend. The next day, Friday, my friend called and told me that she was furious and was going from crying to yelling to just sitting there. Monday morning I show up at work and am greeted by her boss. He told me that I had a bad attitude and that he was going to lay me off because there were cutbacks coming and that he was going to give me two weeks notice when the budget was finalized. I was not surprised, so I spent the morning looking for other opportunities and positions to apply for. I didn't do a single bit of work and my boss never poked her head out of her office. Later that afternoon I received a call from HR and I'm thinking, here it comes. But instead I am told that the competition for a position that I had applied for was completed. And because I had landed in the top 10 of the English position and in the second position in the French position I had the choice of which office I wanted to work in. I was very happy because I could choose to work at my old office with all my friends. I danced around the office a little and no one could miss the absolute joy on my face. I spent the next two weeks doing absolutely nothing and my bosses just ignored it because… bonus. The position I took was two levels higher than my supervisor's boss and he was required to ask for my permission to change anything in his office. My former supervisor was demoted because of my complaints to the union and she lost her bilingual bonus. I started in the mail room and learned so much about the organization that I was able to be placed anywhere and work effectively. I had a degree and certificates in two polar opposite fields of study before I started working here. Just because someone is working for minimum wage, it doesn't mean that they are stupid and you can treat them like crap. You never know, they just may be your boss one day. Although I was very upset at the way I had been treated, I never used my position to be punitive to them. I could have easily done so without any suspicion. but. They needed to learn how a boss should treat their staff, not to be subjected to abuse. The third story is called Precisely on Time. This occurred while I was still in an apprenticeship at my current workplace, a few years ago. It was never really commented on by management but was internal within my department. We have an electronic timestamping system to lock our work hours. When we start working, we stamp in and when we leave, we stamp out. The lock time is then uploaded at the end of the month and our monthly worked overtime is calculated. At the time, my daily habit was, if my shift started at 12.30, I'd leave home at 12 and be at work at roughly 12.15 or 12.20, depending on traffic. In really bad cases, it can be 12.25. Now, it's well around to know that for every hour there are time spans in which two people have to be present at work at all times. From 12 to 12.15, 12.30 to 12.45, 13 to 1315 and so on. So the employee could only leave his position when his replacement and work clothes was present and locked. That's why I was oftentimes quite early. If I arrived at say 1220 I'd immediately log in, change into my work clothes and while I did that the colleague I replaced could change clothes and go home since I'd be ready at 1230 at least. Now there was one colleague who did not like that, mainly because I'd collect overtime for that even though other colleagues could take that time off their schedule. So he told me to be locked in precisely on time, at 12.30, though he wanted me to be already in my work clothes before logging in. Since we aren't allowed to wear our work clothes outside of work, including the work commute, he wanted me to be early at work to change my clothes. I should send a colleague off so they could change their clothes while still locked in and leave for home while myself only collecting the time my shift is. 
so I did pretty much that. I'd be at work at 12.25. If I was early, I'd sit in my car in the parking lot and wait. Then at 12.25, I would go in, change my clothes and stamp in, which could take more than 5 minutes to do. And because I wasn't early enough, my replacement could not leave early and would make overtime they didn't want. Of course, most colleagues didn't mind that. Nobody cares about staying 10 minutes longer, but a certain colleague did absolutely not like that. This entire thing then ended up backfiring on him, when I didn't make enough work hours, since he also demanded I log out when I'm done with work early in the evenings. So with each week, my time account would shrink and shrink. They'd have me work additional days. But they could not do that all the time, because as an apprentice, I wasn't allowed to work more than 5 days a week, which I already regularly did. They also could not let me work additional hours per day, because as an apprentice I wasn't legally allowed to work more than 8 hours per day either. So of course, at some point, the department management asked questions. Why I'm constantly missing hours? Why is the apprentice working weekends too often? And why is he making 9 or 10 hour shifts? After a month he stopped complaining about me being early, and ever since then things have worked flawlessly until 2020 hit. The last story is called Wasted Printer Ink. I worked in an office where we had a one page form needed for all clients that were attached to their vehicle for repair. 70% of the info was the same for these forms, but we were filling them in by hand. It took ages. My hand would cramp and it was dull and stopped us from doing other tasks. I suggested that we could set the computer up. I would set it up and show the others, to print at the very least the info that was the same for every form. I even explained that we could have the forms printed from an excel sheet with all the specific info. The office manager's response was that it would raise printer ink. This is in Australia for context, where everyone was on at least 20 US dollars per hour. So I did as instructed until my last day, using a lot of pens ironically. On my last day, when we had the jobs for the day, I spent 20 minutes creating the spreadsheet and had it print out the entire normal morning workload for the three of us in under 30 minutes. I printed the whole lot dumped them on the manager's desk and went to morning tea, stayed for lunch, walked back after lunch, gathered my things and left. And with that, we end today's video. Let me know what you think about the stories. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the stories and today's video? I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and would like to support me, please subscribe and hit the like button. And if you want to support me even further, why don't you check out the channel membership. I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Bye bye.